All right, now that we've got the front view and the top view drawn with the section view, it's time to come in here and start putting in dimensions. So to get started, I'm gonna set my dimension layer current. Actually, if you have ever seen me dimension before, then you know that I like to do a separate layer called dimension offset. Now we all have different ways of uh, setting that dimension spacing. This is my favorite way to do it. So we're gonna go to layer properties, create a new dimension or new layer, and we're gonna call this Dimension offset, you can call it whatever you want, construction, um, dimension construction. For some reason, when I make construction lines in my head, they should be yellow. Absolutely no reason for that, and just that's the way I like to make them. So I'm gonna set that layer current, and I'm gonna come through here and offset my object. So we know that first dimension should be at least 0.4, each additional dimension should be at least 0.25. Whatever it is you decide to go with, just be consistent with, throughout your views. So I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna do the offset command, and I will actually start with typing in L. So I started the command, I haven't clicked or typed anything else in. Um, at this point, I'm gonna type L for layer and I'm gonna change it to be my current layer. So those new offsets will come in on the layer that I have set current instead of the source. My first offset distance, I'll type in 0.4, and I am going to just take my object out 0.4, just kinda all the way around everywhere that I feel like I need it, one here. Now I'm gonna do the same offset command again, but this time I'll type in 0.25 here to here. I think we really only have that one, but just can't hurt to have more offsets than you need. All right, so this looks good. Press enter. And now I can set my dimension layer current. And I will come in here. I'm going to go over to annotate. I'm going to make sure I'm using my standard dimension. I need to set up my dimension style, so I'm gonna click on to this little arrow here. If I'm on annotate and I'm in the dimensions panel, this tiny arrow gets me to my dimension style. Again, there's so many ways to get to dimension style. You can go to dimension, dimension style, you can say format, dimension style. There's ways to get to it on the home menu under annotation, dimension style. There's no right or wrong way to get here, just however you get to your dimension style. We'll click on modify and I'm just following the instructions in the book. So my text height that says should be 0.125, so I'll come in here, 0.125 for my text height. My arrowhead size always matches my text height, so 0.125. My center mark should be set to line, which is good, it's already there. Extend beyond the dimension line. So this is under the lines tab, this right here, extend beyond dimensions. We're gonna have that one, 0.125 as well. Precision, now the precision varies, and that's just saying from dimension to dimension within my drawing, it's gonna vary. They're not all just 0 .00, um, uh, but what we'll do is go to primary units, It is not liking my 0 0.125, 0 0.125 here. Okay, uh, we'll go over to primary units and we'll set most of our dimensions looking at this sketch. Most of them have two decimal places. So I'll just go ahead and set it to two decimal places. Um, zero suppression, we need to suppress the leading zero because we're working with decimal. And offset from origin, go back over here, my offset from origin, we're gonna set that to 0.062, okay, that's it. We do wanna make sure, you should have done this already, but we do also wanna make sure under text, we've got it set to standard, but click on this little dot, 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 make sure that your standard is, is set to Arial. Um, if it's not, go ahead and change that. So we'll say okay, and close. So now I'm ready to do my dimensions. I'll come to the annotate tab. And this is it, we're just ready to put in some dimensions here. So we've got the overall dimension of one right here. We've got the height of this whole side. Top view is three. And see how I'm just snapping to that little offset that I have. So I'm also gonna do an overall dimension of 10 here. Now that was not a given dimension in my sketch. 
So what I'm going to do is double click on this and I'm going to make that a reference dimension. So I'm going to put parentheses around the dimension itself. Don't mess with the dimension. Don't delete that dimension. It's kind of highlighted. It tells me it's 10. I'm not messing with the actual dimension. I'm just putting parentheses around it. This tells us that it is a reference dimension. So tolerancing is not going to apply to that dimension. So that looks good. Now we need to do that cylinder. And if you notice this, this biggest circle right here, well, I know we, you, you want to dimension it where it looks like a circle. I totally get that, but it's technically a cylinder. And we, we dimension cylinders in their profile view with a linear dimension. So I'm going to come over here. That was a four, but we do have to force it to have the diameter symbol when we do it as a cylinder in the profile view. So I'm double clicking on it. I can click on this word symbol and I can pull this down and choose the option that says diameter. I also can type percent percent C if I wanted to. Remember percent percent C for circles. Circles have diameters is how I remember that. But that's good. Close the text editor. Looking good. We're really done with the dimensions on that top view. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to put in the dimensions for the um, front view here and there are several dimensions that we need to add but these dimensions we're going to have to come in and add those GDT symbols so this will be our first time to add those GDT symbols in here so let's go with we're going to go with the diameter command and we're going to click on of this right here this is the counter sink remember we're going to click on the largest and we can shift right click. I'm gonna just have it go nearest so that I definitely touch this, but um, I don't have to be up at the quadrants. So I've got that in here. Now what I need to do, I've got the dimension pointing to the biggest circle, but I do need to edit the text to put in those other lines. So I'm gonna double click. You can see my cursor blinking. I'm gonna scroll into it a little bit. You can see my cursor blinking before that diameter. If I press enter right now, it gave me a line right above. So now I'm gonna type in 1.5, diameter 1.5. Now I could come over here and select the diameter option up here, or I can just type in percent percent C for circle, uh, gives us a diameter. Right when you type that C, it just changes it to a diameter symbol. And I'm gonna type in 1.50, that looks good. I'm gonna come over here after, I'm just doing my down arrow on my keyboard to come to the end of my 2.5. I'm gonna put a space, always leave your caps lock on, X space 82, and we need the degree symbol. So I can come up to symbol, the little pull down here, percent percent D, I could type that or I could select it from this list, however you wanna do it. D for degree gives us that degree symbol. Now I'm going to do my arrow key and go all the way in front of that 2.50. And here I need to get the counter bore symbol. So how we're going to get this is we are going to click on this symbol, the little at symbol up here on the text editor, and we'll go all the way down to the option that says other. This is going to pull up a character map. And that character map, the font needs to be set to GDT. Mine pulled up to GDT, and that might be because I've used it before in AutoCAD. If yours came up to any other font, you're going to scroll down till you see GDT. Set that one current. If once you load AutoCAD onto your computer, that's not a normal font that you would normally have, but it does come with AutoCAD. So if you're running AutoCAD, you do have that GDT font. It was part of the installation with AutoCAD. Now, if you look at all these symbols that I can put in, all these GDT symbols, this the, the last full row, it's not technically the last row because we do have this little guy right here, but in the last full row, we've got the ones that we need right next to each other. I've got my counter bore, counter sink, and my depth symbol. So we're going to click on the counter sink. We'll say select, and you can see it comes down here, characters to copy. I'm going to say copy, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to paste. You could right click and say paste. I'm just going to hold down control V, and I'm just going to paste. Now notice once you paste it, it kind of, it, it pressed enter really right after that, so it made it its own line. I'm going to backspace just to get those to be right next to each other. So this looks good. I'll close the text editor. And now that dimension has all the information that we need in it. And what's nice about that is I edited the actual dimension itself. I didn't just type in text above or below. So this looks good. Now what I'm going to do is come over here 
to my other diameter that I need and I'm going to click again on the largest circle that's got a diameter of one. I'm going to double click on it and this is where I need to put my counter bore. So I'm going to press enter. Again, you can see the flashing cursor that lets me know I'm in front of that diameter one. If I press enter, it just gives me a new line. So I'll arrow up to get up there and I'm going to type in two space X space again with caps and I need to type in diameter 0.75 so percent percent C for circle gives us diameter 0.75 that looks good now I do need to put in that that uh, symbol that counter bore symbol in front of the one but I'm gonna go ahead and type in all the basic text that I need so I'm gonna come down press enter to get another line and I'm gonna type in 0.125 now I'll go in here and add in that symbol. So I can come in and say other and go, it'll pull up another character map. But since I already did it once before, if you look in my tray down here, I have the character map. I didn't actually close it out. So if you were to say other, it would just open up a brand new character map and you would end up with multiples. No big deal if you do. I'm gonna backspace to get rid of the character that I copied before. And now I'll select the counter bore symbol, select, copy come in here paste again it tries to make it a new line so we'll backspace to get them all to be together I'm gonna click right here and go to that same character map I'm gonna back up so that this isn't part of my copy and I'm gonna click on the depth symbol select copy come into my drawing paste back it up so they're in the same line the reason that I typed in all of my text ahead of time is, and then I go in at the very end to add symbols, is once you change it to add that symbol in, if I were to type in 0.125, look what happens. It comes in on that weird GDT font, and we don't want that to happen. We want all of our text to be exactly the same. We want it all to be that Arial at the right text type. So we are going to not type in that 0.125 after we've inserted the symbol. We're going to type it in first and then just put the symbol in front of it. That's it. Close the text editor and press enter. We're done with that one. We have one more to do and that is a radius and that is for this outer arc here. That's pretty easy. Now one thing that I do want to point out is we need to um, get those arrows to be on the inside. So remember for a large radius or a large diameter, we put the arrows on the inside. Instead of having the arrow point from the outside like this, we're going to have it come from the inside out. And so to get that, what I'm going to do is come into my dimension styles. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it It doesn't have to be all caps, but we'll start with standard. This is for the large radii. The only thing we need to do is come to the fit tab. We're going to change this option to say text, and then we'll check these two boxes. That is the only difference between a large and a small radius. Close. And now we can just select this, pull it down, and we'll change it to the large and see how that arrow comes from the inside out. We'll do the same thing for this one. Pull it down. The arrow comes from the inside out. And this looks good. Now let's look at the sketch. One thing that I really like to do is get a highlighter. Can't stress it enough. It's a cheap, cheap little tool to have, but it's an incredibly important tool. And let's ask ourselves, do we have all the dimensions that we need? So in looking at this, I do in my book, I have this dimension. It's exactly the way that it appears in the book. So I can highlight that in the book. Check. Done. I have a one. I did put my one up here so I can highlight that in the book. Done. Ooh, this radius of one, I need to double click it and I need to type in 2x space radius of one. You could even do 2 space x space. Um, so I did edit that one and I'm glad I checked myself in the book because I would not have caught that before. It has an overall 
of 3. I did add the 10, but I put it in parentheses because it was not given. I have a diameter of 4. That looks good. I have this uh, countersink right here. What I did not do is the other dimensions here. And I actually am going to have two more lines. So I'm going to do another offset with a distance of 0.25 to get this one out here. Oops, that needs to be on the offset layer. All right, so now I'm gonna do a linear dimension and I'm gonna take it from here to the center. Oops, I don't wanna be on the large radii. <laughs> Go back to standard when you do this. Linear, we'll click here. We'll click to the center line here and we're gonna set it down. Oh, it actually could go right here. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. And we are going to do another linear. And it's going to go from center to center. And that goes up a distance of eight. So this looks good. Uh, the, both of those could have come down one. So that 0.4. And then this could have come down to here. That actually looks better. That way we've got consistent spacing throughout. All right, this looks great. And then I just come home and I turn off or freeze that dimension offset layer so that I don't see it anymore. It was just a guide to help me through this. So this looks great. I've got it dimensioned. In the next video, we'll do the isometric view of the flange bearing.